Hey everyone, welcome to a special 4th of July episode of Family Moments, where we use really cool object lessons that teach the truth about what matters most. Exactly. And today, we're going to have some fun with fireworks. Fireworks? That sounds kind of dangerous. <laughs> Not to worry, this is a family-friendly show and we are all about safety. Whew, that's a relief. Yeah, no sense risk getting hurt or injured. So what you're saying is we'll be using safe stuff like sparklers, snap poppers, and black snakes. Exactly. Never heard of them. Oh, brother. Then I guess we won't be needing these now, will we? Sadie, th that's dynamite. Dynamite? I thought this was just a giant firecracker. Get rid of it, would ya? <sighs> wow. I have a feeling that today is going to be a blast. Oh, brother. Hey kids, Pastor Robbie here, along with my lovely assistant and wonderful daughter, Sadie. Hello. And today, we're gonna have some fun learning about temper. Temper? I thought we were going to celebrate the 4th of July. We are. But you know how most people celebrate the 4th of July, don't you? Yeah, with fireworks. Right. But fireworks are also used as another way of describing when someone loses their temper. Oh, kind of like a firecracker, loud and disturbing. Exactly. Let's take a look at today's verse that comes from Proverbs 15, 18, where it says, A hot-tempered person stirs up conflict, but the one who is patient calms a quarrel. Does that mean I can never get angry? No, that would be almost impossible. It's really more about learning to control your temper. When little kids get upset, sometimes they'll throw what's called a temper tantrum. Yeah, that's not good. No, it's not. But it's even worse when adults throw temper tantrums. It's like they've never learned to control their temper. Their temper controls them. But sometimes it just feels good to let it all out, doesn't it? It does but it sure leaves a mess behind. What do you mean? Well, the Bible says that a hot-tempered person commits many sins. Let me demonstrate this for you with a little object lesson I like to call as mad as a snake. And all we're gonna need is some TNT magic black snakes, a box of matches, some snap poppers, and a sparkler. We'll start with the black snakes. I've seen these before, they're kind of fun. Yeah, they can be at first, Kind of like sin. We'll take one out of the box and pretend it's you with all your frustrations bottled up tightly inside. You just can't wait to get all that anger out of you and along comes the spark of an argument. And all of a sudden, your temper takes over and you start unloading. Hmm, I have to admit, it does look kind of cool. Yeah, sin can appear that way at first. Wow, it just keeps going and going. Yeah, until all you're left with is an ugly mess. Oh, I don't know. It looks kind of neat. Oh, yeah? Try picking it up. Oh, man, it just kind of crumbles up, and it's dirty. Yeah, when tempers flare in the moment, it might feel pretty good to scream and yell and get it all out. Yeah, it does. Sometimes it just feels good to explode. But the problem is, explosions are destructive and can do lots of damage and it's really hard to clean up the mess that's left behind. Yeah, this stuff is pretty filthy. And it wasn't even an explosive example. Imagine if we'd used firecrackers or cherry bombs. That would not have been good. No, there's no way around it. Sin is messy business. So how are we supposed to keep from exploding? Great question. The second part of this verse says that patience calms the quarrel. In other words, we need to practice being patient. You make it sound so easy. Well, it's all part of growing up. But I've seen some adults who get pretty mad and can't control their temper very well. I was at the ball game the other night and this coach was screaming at the umpire. It was not pretty. No, I'm sure it was not. We need to form the habit of doing everything without grumbling or arguing, as it mentions in Philippians. When we form that habit, do you know what happens? What? Well, the Bible says we will shine like stars in the sky. Huh. Yeah, when we get mad all the time, we're like this box of snap pops. 
Hey, he just cut in line. Why don't you mind your own business? Quit hogging all the ketchup, would you? What are you doing? I hate this show. Dad, you're making a mess. I know, a loud mess, and somebody's got to clean it up. But when we form the habit of controlling our temper, we're more like this box of sparklers. And we shine like stars in the sky. Pretty, and not as nearly as hard to clean up. No, all we have to do is let it burn out, douse it in water, and toss it in the trash. So what you're saying is, instead of just unleashing my anger, I should learn to control it so that I shine for Jesus. Exactly. Learning to control your temper is a beautiful thing. So Sadie, what did you learn today? I learned that a hot-tempered person is like a kid throwing a temper tantrum, only he hasn't learned how to control his temper, which usually leads to sinning, which is kind of messy and hard to clean up. Exactly. And the best way to control your temper is to form the habit of being patient with others and learn how to do everything without grumbling or complaining. Then we'll shine like stars in the sky. Very good. Speaking of which, what did you ever do with all that dynamite you had earlier? I created this really cool detonator and attached it to this fuse that leads to the dynamite. Oh, so where's the dynamite? I hid it under your chair. Well, under my chair? Yeah, I wanted to get it out of sight and keep my set nice and clean. Yeah, but if it explodes, I mean- Don't I worry. For it to explode, someone would have to push this handle down like this. <gasps> Oops. Sorry, Dad. Uh, yeah. We'll see you around. <laughs>